Hello and welcome to another pen video from me, Penultimate Dave. So I have here another 10 pens currently inked this week. I think let's go through them briefly one by one. We'll go through them in a little bit more detail and then we'll do a writing sample. So from left to right, we have a London Pen Company. This is Nona 14 in the uh, Bohemian uh, Twilight. And this is a Jonathan Brooks material. We have a Diplomat Aero. We have a Jinhao X159. We have a Conway Stewart, and this is the Churchill in the Red Stardust. We have a Conway Stewart in the Churchill in the Blue Stardust. We have a Anoto Magna Classic in the uh, Chased Green. We have a uh, Sailor King of Pen Pro Gear, and this is the Lucky Charm. We have a Sailor King of Pen. And this is in the Stormy Seas. We have a Banu Euphoria in the Bourbon. And we have a Banu Euphoria in Vodka on the Rocks. So, I think let's go through these pens in a little bit more detail. So, this is uh, a very lovely uh, material. Uh, this is from Jonathan Brooks of the Carolina Pen Company. Uh, the material is called the B Bohemian Twilight. And this is in the London Pen Company. Uh, Nona 14, which is a faceted pen that you can hopefully see there. Uh, it's uh, a matte finish, uh, sort of like a silky finish, I would say. Um, it's not a gloss finish, and, and I, to be honest, I actually prefer it, at least in this material. I don't know how other materials would look in, in the matte finish, but I have to say I am still liking this pen a lot that, that Sean has made at the uh, London Pen Company. The material here from Jonathan Brooks is really quite lovely. Uh, there's quite a lot of depth in this material, and I do I have to say I like that material a lot. Uh, if I unscrewed the cap, it has a number six size Bock nib, and uh, that is, a, I believe, a broad nib I'd asked for on this one. Uh, you cannot post the Nona 14 cap, so they aren't designed to do so, unfortunately. Um, so if you are a cap poster, then just bear that one in mind. I'm not a cap poster. It doesn't bother me in the slightest. So for me, this is actually quite a nice size pen in my hand. Um, the section is quite um, a good length. Uh, you also have this uh, concave section there as well to stop your fingers slipping down onto the nib and feed and getting a little bit inky, which I always really do appreciate because having a concave section really helps a lot. Um, it is a cartridge converter pen, but I have to say that I am really, really liking that pen a lot. The next pen here is uh, a Diplomat Aero, and uh, these are quite nice pens. They are metal. Um, they are, for me, a little bit on the shorter side and the slimmer side. Um, but these, because they are metal, they do feel very cold in wintry months. Uh, and it also depends on what climate you're in, I guess. Like some, some wintry months are actually quite hot in some countries. Uh, in the UK, it's not as hot. Um, but we are sort of uh, edging towards spring, which is always a, a good sign. Um, this is actually quite a, a good length in my hand. It's not too short for me. And I can post that cap as well. And it does post quite nicely, quite deeply, quite securely as well. Uh, it is a cartridge converter pen. Um, I do find the cap is really, really light. Uh, the section is a long section. And I'm I'm not typically a fan of long section pens. Uh, but uh, it, there's nothing that it really creates a problem for me with. It, it's just that I prefer like a regular size section. Uh, the section here is a little bit on the thinner side. Um, this one does have a 14-carat uh, gold nib there, and this was gifted to me from a friend. I really do like writing with this. It's a broad nib, uh, cartridge converter pen, and push-to-click cap as well. And I'm not normally a fan of push-to-click caps nowadays. I prefer threaded caps. However, the reason why I'm not normally that much of a fan of push-to-click caps is that 
they typically are not a strong clip in terms of the cap going onto the section there but this one is so I have to say that I am starting to come around a little bit more to push to click caps and uh, liking that a little bit more but as I said most of my pens nowadays pretty much are screw threads the next pen here inked up is the Jinhao X159 and, and these continue to amaze me actually I, I really really do like uh, these X159s and for the, the cost of the pen, which is around about six pound euros or dollars, it's actually a really good price. It is an all resin pen. It's not like the older Jinhao maybe X450s, which were metal or brass with a resin coating on them. This is all acrylic or resin plastic, um, but it does come with a number eight size nib. And unfortunately, uh, from what I've seen, all of mine, uh, the six I have, have uh, fine nibs. Uh, you can, I, from what I've seen on listings, get them in extra fine. I've not seen any in a medium or broad. Um, this is a cartridge converter pen, though. And you can see that there. And got a little bit of a vacuum going on there with that ink. Probably need to shake it down a little bit. Um, not a huge amount of ink left in there because I have been writing with it a lot. You can post a cap and it will post quite deeply and securely if you want to. Uh, but even without it, it's still quite a long pen. Uh, and that number eight size nib, I do like a lot. Uh, the only thing I would say is that these sections are quite girthy. So um, these really are quite thick pens. Uh, but this is essentially what Jin Hao are calling a knockoff. Or, or most people are calling a knockoff to the Mont Blanc 149. It is very similar um, in terms of size, in terms of length, in terms of shape. But obviously, it's not a piston filling pen. It's not got a gold nib and um, the, the trims obviously say Jin Hao. But it, it's kind of a, let's try and copy a Mont Blanc 149, but make it with our own branding type thing. The next pen I haven't inked up for some time, and I really like this pen. Uh, it is a, a Conway Stewart, and this is the Churchill, and it's in the red Stardust. And I bought this a number of years ago, and I think I bought it. I think I bought it for my birthday. Um, at least that's what I remember. I'll have to go back and have a look uh, and look at my pen database to see exactly when I bought it but I'm pretty sure I bought it for my birthday and I really do like this because it's got that red it's a red stardust material and uh, this is made by bespoke British pens in the UK that basically bought up all the parts and rights to uh, the Conway Stewart's uh, in in the UK uh, and they make this and uh, I really do love the pen um, it does have their newer or new-ish i guess um flag nib although i believe they've now gone back to conway stewart nibs uh, these are made by bock like the conway stewart nibs the older ones were and likewise the newer uh, design ones uh, were as well uh, it's a cartridge converter pen uh, i can post the cap and it will post um i won't say deeply but it, it will post securely but it makes it a wand and i honestly just think it's way too long at that point to to be posting that cap but if you like posting your caps or you need to post your caps then uh that you can do but this material really is quite lovely uh, i do like this and i liked it so much that i think it was about a year later or so i uh saw them advertising uh the blue stardust and i wanted to get the blue stardust and you can see there again that lovely stardust material there really is quite beautiful uh material and uh, if i bring it up close there you'll see that as i rotate that cap so again this is made by bespoke british pens in the uk um i'd say it probably doesn't sparkle as much as the red stardust um but it is a bit like a galaxy there that you can see it really is beautiful um, so it is made by Bespoke British Pens, and again, I got this with the uh, somewhat newer flag nib on there. Uh, these are 18 karat gold nibs. Now, 
Bespoke British pens originally were advertising these as flex nibs. They're not flex nibs. Um, they are fairly rigid uh, Bok gold, uh, 18 count gold nibs. Um, I don't know how that they, they were able to term these flex nibs because they definitely are not. Um, but th th these are still fairly good writing nibs. They're, they're firmish, um, quite firm, but I, I like them. So... Uh, I got a medium 18 cat gold nib on here, and uh, same on the uh, red star dust. Um, you, you can post the cap uh, there, and again, it is just a little bit too much of a wand there. Um, and I honestly think the the pen length is actually pretty good as it is already. So I'm not one that I feel the need to post my caps, but if you needed to, then you could do so there if you so wish. Now. Interesting enough, I always thought the Anoto Classic range here in the green, in the chase green, was similar size to that of the um, Conway Stewart Churchill, but clearly it's not. It's, it's surprising how your mind maybe plays tricks on you a little bit. So I always thought it was about the same size, maybe slightly thinner, and it definitely is thinner, but it's also shorter as well. But I still love this pen a lot, and uh, I bought this second hand, and uh, it is uh, an Anoto. Uh, it did come with a modified nib, and it came with a very crisp italic nib, which I really did not like. It literally cut paper. So I rounded the edges off of the nib and made it more of a cursive italic, uh, a little bit more stubbish-like. So uh, it is still a medium nib. Uh, it writes a little bit broader now, uh, almost on towards a broad. Um, but uh, you can see there that the tipping here, there really was not a lot of tipping on that nib at all. So whoever ground the nib originally really did remove all of that tipping. Uh, and th that's just a warning, just uh, I would say... To be careful of when you're buying a used pen, just like if you're buying a used car or a used computer, um, a used phone, the previous seller is not going to disclose everything about the pen. So uh, this pen wasn't disclosed, like the nib wasn't disclosed, it had been modified, uh, and then it was sold to, to Izod's, and then Izod's uh, sold it to me. So, uh, so Izod's didn't know about... Uh, I'm guessing didn't know about the nib. Um, now, if I wasn't uh, competent at tuning my nibs, I would probably have just sent it back and said, look, this nib is terrible. I really don't want it. Give me my money back. But because I'm competent in tuning my own nibs, I, I realized that I, I could tune that nib and actually improve it, and I did. I got it for a really good price. So worst case, I could buy a, another gold uh, 18 count gold anoto nib screw it in and it would be similar to a new priced version of the anoto classic in the chase green but i really didn't want to do that um because ultimately it was a good price and i didn't really want to be going having to go and buy another gold nib for it so i'm glad i was able to improve that nib uh the the cap on here um does post quite securely uh, again, though, no, it makes a pen quite long, so I, I just, I know a lot of you do like posting your caps, um, but uh, you can see there is a slight inky mark around there where that that posted uh, from the threads. Um, it is a cartridge converter pen, uh, and I, I do like cartridge converters it, as much as I sometimes prefer having power vac fillers or piston fillers because they hold immense amounts of ink i do like the cartridge converters because i do know that it's very easy to clean out that nib and feed with uh, by pushing a bulb syringe onto where the converter goes and just flushing it out with water in a lot of cases i know i can probably unscrew the nib as well uh, and put that in an ultrasonic cleaner and worst case scenario if the converter fails i can just go and buy another converter so unless the the cap shatters cracks chips uh, or the clip snaps um, 
I can actually probably repair or replace most of the parts of that pen without any issue. Even if even if I dropped the pen and, and I broke the nib, I could unscrew the nib and then replace the nib. Yes, I'd, I'd have to buy a new nib, but still though, the, it, there's a lot more repairability and replaceability in a cartridge converter pen than a piston or a power vac. So although they are quite nice to have a, a piston or a power vac, filling pen it is a lot easier just to repair these and it's probably why i also like sailor as well so this is a sailor king of pen and this is the uh, pro gear version and uh, it's a lucky charm limited or special edition here um, and it does say uh, on the cap band here sailor japan fountain or sorry founded in 1911 um and i do like this uh quite a lot um this one it is a little bit frosted here let me wipe that nib off because it is a bit cold this morning it's two degrees outside it's a lot warmer inside it's about 19 degrees but still obviously quite cold i do love this nib it is a two-tone gold silver nib and i really do like those ones from um sailor there it does have an abs plastic feed you can see a little bit of ink obviously pooling around the inside of the section there as well um but it is a cartridge converter pen and i can show you that there as well so it it is uh, a nice uh easy replaceable repairable now i know a lot of people have uh griped on in the past about sailor converters being absolute rubbish I've never had an issue with any of them. Um, and uh, you can post the cap here. It's It will post, um, but it does have a slight spring to the inner cap here. So uh, it will pop off sometimes now and again. Uh, but this is a, a lengthy pen, so I, I like it as it is, to be honest. So uh, I have that one inked up this week as well. I also have this one, which is a Sailor Kinger pen, and this is in the stormy seas and again you can see uh founded uh, well, actually it says the king of pen 1911 sailor uh around that cap band uh it's a metallic blue uh it is a regular cigar shaped king of pen but it is in a resin uh this has a single tone colored uh, king of pen nib uh both of these are medium nibs and uh, you can see the abs plastic feed there Again, it is cartridge converter, so you can see there um, it is a cartridge converter pen. Uh, all of the Sailor King of Pens are. Uh, you can post the cap and it will post uh, quite deeply and securely. Um, but again, I, I find uh, it's actually long enough as it is. Uh, these sections are a little bit on the, the larger size of diameter uh, in compared to some other pens, but I do like uh the sailor king of pens i like how they write uh really good pens um they're not cheap but then again uh they again they're fairly repairable and and i i i prefer them in the resins rather than the ebonite the next pen inked up is a banu euphoria and this is in the bourbon uh or whiskey as i like to to call this pen uh, really, really uh, beautiful, beautiful uh, reds, browns, oranges there. It really is quite nice on that faceted pen. Uh, I have to say, I, I've got other Banu pens, but I do like these Euphorias more. Uh, it has a number six size Schmidt uh, fine nib on this one. It is a cartridge converter. But as you can see, the length of this pen is quite long. You can post a cap, but again... It just becomes a bit of a joke in terms of length. The section is quite long, um, and I typically am not enamoured with longer section pens, but it doesn't bother me. I'm, I think having that long section with the threads higher uh, means that you're not really putting your fingers on these threads. I know a lot of people will complain about threads uh, sections being too short and threads being pronounced where you can feel them. I, I don't feel that on this one, thankfully. So um that that is uh, quite a, a nice um pen that, that i've got inked up this week as well 
And then also uh, another favourite here is the Banu Euphoria. And this is in the vodka on the rocks. Beautiful, um, very semi-translucent pen there. You can probably see the blackness here of the uh, section and nib and the converter here. Uh, very, very uh, beautiful sparkly pen. I, I have to say I like this pen a lot. I, I wish I... I probably could put a silver glittery ink in here, but I, I haven't... Um, I probably should do at some point, but I do like a blue glittery um, ink in here. Um, and I guess there's quite a bit of bluish here as well. Uh, on the pen and on the pen cap so for me that's quite nice uh, and allows me to ink up with a blue ink uh, number six size schmidt fine nib again cartridge converter you can post the cap it posts uh, deeply and securely section is long uh, the sections are a little bit narrower than i would prefer but i don't mind them uh, i will still write with them and I have to say they are still fairly comfortable for me, although I am more of a fan of a thicker section on my pens. Uh, I find a, a thinner section, a shorter pen, a lighter pen, typically has me death gripping the section more, and then it creates hand cramp. So a wider section, a heavier pen as well, typically uh, allows me to not grip it as tight and and I get very little hand cramp at that point, or hand fatigue. So there you have it. That's my 10 pens currently inked up this week. I think let's now go and do a writing sample. So the first pen inked up is the London Pen Company Nona 14. So we'll do an ink swatch. And I do like this. Uh, it is a broad-ish nib from Sean at the London Pen Company uh, on this pen. So it is a London Penco uh, Nona 14, uh, and uh, it is a broad, uh, and it's a still bock nib. And the ink in here uh, is uh, Karen Dash, uh, and it's Vibrant Green which I never really recognise as a vibrant green colour, but uh, it's what Karen Dash called the ink, so I guess it's vibrant green. Have you ever found some inks and thought, really, what, what colour is that ink? The next pen inked up is the Diplomat Aero. So we'll do an ink swatch here. Now, this is a 14 karat gold nib. Uh, it's a broad nib, and I really do like this quite a lot. I do find it has a little bit of hard start and skip tendency, though. So, it probably is a nib that maybe is slightly over polished. Um, it's a uh, Diplomat Aero, and it's a broad, and it's a 14 karat gold nib. And then the ink in here is uh, Diamine uh, Imperial Blue, which is uh, quite a, a nice uh, blue ink that, that I do actually like quite a bit. The next pen ink tub is a Jinhao X159. So we'll do an ink swatch here. Now, this is... Uh, all intents and purposes, a fine nib, but I do find it quite wet. So I do like this. Um, so it's a Jinhao X159, and it is a fine, uh, and uh, it is a steel nib, um, a, a Jinhao made nib, or at least Jinhao branded. I'm, I'm guessing it's probably made by Jinhao. And then uh, the ink in here is uh, Diamine, and it's Oxblood. Uh, but it, it is quite a nice writer, but not all of the X159s are. I have had to smooth out a few of my X159s. The next pen inked up is the Conway Stewart Churchill in the Red Stardust. So we'll do an ink swatch here. 
and I honestly think this is actually probably a really good red ink to to pair with this pen. So this is the uh, Conway Stewart Churchill Churchill, and it's red stardust. Ugh. I cannot spell today. Stardust. Uh, it's a medium and it's uh, an 18 cat gold nib. And then the ink in here is a uh, diamine poppy red. But that is, I think, a very good match uh, of ink color to the color of that pen. The next pen inked up is a Conway Stewart Churchill in the blue stardust. So again, we'll do an ink swatch here. And I decided to go for a lighter blue. Uh, I've been on this kick for turquoise colored inks for a while now. So I decided I would ink up uh, this in a turquoise instead of a, a more of a darker blue ink. So this is the Conway Stewart Churchill uh, Blue Stardust. And again, it's a medium and it's an 18 cat gold nib. Now, I did say that these were quite firm nibs and, and they are. They do feel a little bit more like a steel nib in terms of a rigidity. Uh, rigidity. Um, but uh, I, I still like how they write. So uh, the ink in here today is Diamine Aqua Lagoon. Uh, but that is uh, a very nice uh, ink, a little bit more on the greener side than blue side, but I just decided I would uh, ink that one up today. The next pen inked up is the Anoto Magna Classic in the Chased Green. So we'll do uh, another ink swatch here. Now, this is a, a medium 18 cat gold nib. Uh, I find it writes lovely and wet. Uh, but I do find now it writes a little bit more on the broad side. So this is the Anoto uh, Magna Classic in the uh, Chased Green or Chased J, depending on where you look. Uh, and it is a medium uh, and it is an 18 cat gold nib. Um, now, Obviously, this was an, a, a very crisp italic. I've smoothed it out and I've made it a little bit more of a stubbish nib. Uh, the ink in here today is a diamine apple glory. Uh, but that is a, a beautiful ink. I still love diamine apple glory a lot. Uh, one of uh, a number of my favorite green inks. The next pen here is a Sailor King of Pen Pro Gear in the Lucky Charm. So we'll do an ink swatch here. Now, in a lot of cases, I will ink this up with a more of a, a bluish green ink, but I decided I would go with this color instead today or this week. So this is a, a Sailor King of Pen. I'm just going to abbreviate it, and it's the... Uh, Pro Gear, uh, so rewriting again, and it's the Lucky Charm because otherwise I will run out of space. And it's a medium, uh, and it's a 21 cat gold nib because it's a Sailor King of Pen nib. And then the ink in here is a Diamine Meadow, uh, which uh, I, I said I typically ink it up with more of a darker green. More of a, a green, bluish green, but I went with a more of a uh, a regular green here uh, in in this week uh, pairing of that ink and pen. The next pen inked up is a Sailor King of Pen, and it's the Stormy Seas. So we'll do an ink swatch, and I will normally ink this one up with a blue ink and. Uh, I think this is a good combination. This is the Sailor King of Pen, and it, it, it's not a pro gear, it's just a regular, and uh, it's the Stormy Seas. And again, it's a medium, and it's a 21 cat gold nib. And uh, the ink in here is a Pelican 
Edelstein Topaz, which uh, is a, a very nice, uh, almost turquoisey blue color. The next pen is a Banu Euphoria Bourbon. So we'll do an ink swatch. And I do like this a lot. Um, it's uh, a beautiful brown ink that I've got inked up here. I just think it, it flows really well and it matches the pen quite nicely as well. Uh, so this is the uh, Banu Euphoria Bourbon. One day I will probably write this as whiskey. Uh, it is a fine and it is a still uh, Schmidt nib. And then the ink in here is uh, Diamine Ochre. Uh, and that is a, a really um, nice brown. Uh, I probably could ink it up with Diamine Golden Brown and it would probably look maybe even better. But uh, I do like that Diamine Ochre. And then the last pen inked up is the Banu Euphoria, a vodka on the rocks. So we'll do an ink swatch. And I do find that this uh, is a nice pairing. I, I probably could, as I mentioned before, put a uh, silvery grey shimmer tastic ink in here, maybe. Uh, but this is the Banu Euphoria. Uh, and it is the vodka on the rocks. And it's a fine and it's a steel Schmidt nib. And the ink in here is a diamine shimmertastic. And it is a cobalt jazz which is quite a nice ink. And I, I think it still goes well with this pen. But maybe at some point I will put uh, something like um, Diamond Shimmertastic Blue Lightning in it. So I think let's take a look at these pens inked up one more time. We have a London Pen Company Nona 14 in a broad steel nib inked up with Karen Dash and Vibrant Green. We have a Diplomat Aero in a broad 14 karat gold nib inked up with Diamond Imperial Blue. We have a Jinhao X159 in a fine steel nib inked up with Diamond Oxblood. We have a Conway Stewart Churchill Red Stardust in a medium 18 karat gold nib inked up with Diamond Poppy Red. We have a Conway Stewart Churchill Blue Stardust in a medium 18 karat gold nib inked up with Diamond Aqua Lagoon. We have an Anoto Magna Classic in the Chase Green in a medium 18 karat gold nib inked up with Diamond apple glory which is a lovely bright uh apple green color uh, we then have a sailor king of pen pro gear in the lucky charm in a medium 21 count gold nib inked up with darmine meadow and you can see the difference there between the the darkness is quite a, a lot of difference there uh, we then have a sailor king of pen in the stormy seas in a medium 21 count gold nib inked up with pelican edelstein topaz we have a Banu Euphoria Bourbon in a fine steel nib inked up with Diamine Ochre. And we have a Banu Euphoria Vodka on the rocks in a fine steel nib inked up with Diamine Shimmertastic Cobalt Jazz. So there you have it. That's my Coney ink pens for this week. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you on the next pen video. Bye bye.